don't we don't march and protest because we like to march and protest. All we want to do is be free. Sean King. from New York. Sean King. What up, man? Hey, good morning, everybody. You know, in just a few minutes, I want to give us an update on our efforts to stop the execution of Rodney Reed. But first, I want to bring you some great news from San Francisco. Several times over this past year, I told you the story of a young man who was running for district attorney there named Chase Boudin. He's one of the most kind, intelligent, compassionate leaders in the country. Decided to step up and run the justice system there in San Francisco. And when he decided to step up, so many people thought it was so far-fetched. He's not even a prosecutor. He's a lifelong civil rights attorney and defense attorney. People thought it was so outrageous that it would just never happen. But on this past Saturday, after several days of counting all the mail-in votes and all the provisional ballots, I'm proud to announce that Chase Boudin is now the next district attorney in San Francisco. I want to talk with our audience about this because this is what happens when we organize. It's not enough for us to say that we want the criminal justice system to change. Wanting it and having a plan to change it are two very different things. We have to have a real plan to change it. And to me, the fastest, most effective way to do this begins and ends with changing your local district attorney. 95% of all of this nation's criminal cases come through that office. And so far since 1996, our organization, Real Justice, has helped elect new DAs in Philadelphia, Boston, St. Louis, Jackson, Mississippi, San Antonio, and now in San Francisco. And each of those DAs are making radical shifts in the system that we're super proud of. But we need to see new district attorneys in Atlanta and Detroit and all the boroughs of New York and Los Angeles and Jacksonville, Florida, and Memphis and Nashville and all over the country. I want to switch gears for a second. We're now just seven days away from the scheduled execution of Rodney Reed in Texas. This weekend, I took my whole family to Austin to help lead a rally there in front of the governor's mansion. We're super proud of how many people from all over Texas and even around the country showed up, including so many TJMS listeners. We now have nearly 2.8 million signatures on our petition to save the life of Rodney Reed. If you haven't signed the petition yet, we encourage you to do so. You can go to freerodneyreed.com. Once you sign up, we send you new action steps to take immediately. And today we're asking you to call the governor, the lieutenant governor, the board of pardons and paroles, and all the legislators that have not yet gotten on board. And when you call the numbers that we give you, they're actually recordings of me. I talk you through the process step by step. So even if you've never done anything like that, We've tried to make it as easy as it could possibly be. And an amazing bipartisan coalition of Republicans and Democrats have come together across Texas to try to stop this execution. But the truth is it's in the hands of just a few people who can stop it. Rodney has several court hearings this week across the country, and any one of those could stop or at least temporarily stay the execution. But ultimately, it's in the hands of just a few Texas officials, mainly conservatives, who can get this right. Before I go this morning, I do want to address several just flat-out lies that people are spreading about Rodney Reed in this case. First and foremost, Rodney is on death row for the murder of one woman named Stacy Stites. And in that case, experts from all over the world have reviewed the evidence and stated that they believe it's scientifically impossible that Rodney Reed murdered Stacy Stites. The evidence, the time of death, they just don't add up. Dr. Phil McGraw reviewed the evidence and came to this same conclusion. The Innocence Project, which is the most reputable exoneration organization in the nation, they came to the same conclusion, which is why so many people are now bringing up cases that Rodney Reed was never charged with, never convicted of, trying to bring up things from the 80s and 90s that he's not on death row for right now. And the truth is, we could bring up all of those things, but he was never charged or convicted in any of those cases. We're going to continue to fight for Rodney Reed. We believe, I fully, honestly, earnestly believe that he is not guilty in this case. And whether he has a, a past that needs to be tried in any other cases or not, to me, is besides the point. We believe he's not guilty, that he's factually innocent in this case. So we're going to continue to fight for Rodney Reed. Please, if you get a chance, sign up, join our efforts at FreeRodneyReed.com. Take care, everybody. Did you go down to Austin this weekend? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, we went down there to Austin, and uh, that was my first time in Austin. I go to Texas all the time, but I'd never been there. I was proud because there were all types of people that had really been fighting for Rodney 
I met people who had been fighting for Rodney for 20 years. Not just, I met his mother and his brother and family, but they were just everyday people who had been on this case long before any of us had ever heard of it. And uh, so people there locally are committed. The people flew in from across the country, drove in from all over Texas. Uh, it was it was a powerful event. And so we're going to keep on fighting, and I'll be sure to keep everybody updated. Sean, I saw a clip of you and uh, before the crowd, which was a, a, a pretty impressive group, uh, a crowd of people, uh, the numbers yeah. uh, in terms of people turning out in, in support. Do you think there will be another if uh, – this coming weekend, as we, as you said, we're. Just I think so. Ahead. I think we'll know. You know, the family and the attorneys are waiting for a couple of hearings. Uh, some that happen today, and tomorrow, and depending on the outcome of those hearings, yeah, I think there'll be uh, another rally, and there may be events all over the country. Actually, so I'll let us know on Thursday, and if I find out sooner, I'll let you all know directly. Public pressure is really high. I mean, it's, you can't you can't turn. On any uh, turn to any news outlet and not see a story about this uh, stay of execution for Rodney Reed. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're glad the case is getting coverage, and uh, and yet at the end of the day, it's just really, truthfully, a few conservative men who have to make this decision. So with all this coverage, with all the petition signatures and all of that, really comes down to just a few random people. Uh, in power in Texas who have the, the power and authority to make this decision. So we, we will see. So and the fiancé? The, the, the fiancé fiance the- did weigh in. She, she posted it on her website. I don't know if she said anything on social media, but uh, she did post something on her website. Um, the, the thing that I was uh, noting uh, the other day in my newsletter is that the state of Texas is staying the execution of a man who is a cop killer. A part of the Texas Seven, because he wants his Buddhist monk to be with him as he goes right. to to the chair, right, and and for, right. for for the death. So, my my point was, if they can delay the execution because they don't want to give this man his religious uh, guide, then what is to stop them from giving another man an opportunity to make his case for his innocence when all of this evidence is so overwhelming? Yeah, no, no, absolutely right. And so even if they just gave a temporary delay for 30 days or 90 days, any of that, just an, a greater opportunity to look at all this new evidence would be great. That's just what we need. All right. Seven yeah, days away, you, you say? Seven days.